Welcome back, my name's Ertzi, the Neanderthal Gamer, and this is Tension Training Part 2. And yes, the first thing every pilot wants to do is fly a helicopter. However, today we're not starting with flying. Instead, let's have a look at the map. Okay, let's have a closer look at the map. Now, let's have a closer look at the map. This is the island of Altus where we are, and we're going to talk about map reading, and route planning, and route flying. So let's go to the map. As you can see, here we are at the Amphara airfield. Okay, first thing you notice about the map, it's quite cluttered. There are greens for scrub, there are rocks, there are roads, there are power lines. There are shrines, and there are churches, and if you look a little further down, there's a petrol station. All these things we'll find on the map, but it's confusing, so I always, I always recommend that we uh, remove the textures. Okay, now we've stripped it back down to the bare essentials, which are the grid lines, going from left to right, as you can see the numbers increase. And if you look at the side, grid numbers increase as you go from bottom to top. These are called the grid lines, and they indicate a way of showing where you are. Just zoom out slightly, right. But if this box here is one kilometre by one kilometre, so it's a thousand kilometre, a thousand metres on each side, and you can nominate this box by using zero nine and 24. So, 0924 would be this fox here. How do you know which way to read it? Well, there's a mnemonic which says you go along the stairs before you go... sorry. There's a mnemonic, mnemonic that says you go along the corridor before you go up the stairs. Along the corridor, up the stairs. There are te technical names. The top line, which goes left to right, as numbers increase, is called Eastings, because they increase going e west to east. And obviously, if you go south to north, they're the Northings. And you always read the Eastings first, and then the Northings. Along the corridor, up the stairs. So, that square there will be 0924. But that's not really very accurate. And that sort of gives you a general idea in a one kilometre grid square. Not good you try to find somewhere to land or a target. Now, you may notice I've marked two landing zones, HLS Alpha and HLS Bravo. So let's have a look at HLS Alpha. Now, You'll see as I zoomed in, the uh, Eastings went from 042 digits to 049 in that case. So each one of these squares is 100 metres long, 100 metres high. So I could say for this landing spot, zoom in, it is 0482192. Reference clear ground west of the castle. And that gives you a six figure grid reference. You can use eight figures if you want, but you only use eight figures usually for artillery missions or firing off smart bombs or cruise missiles. But if you want, you could say that that is 0483 is not quite halfway, so it's not one, so it's two or three, you'll say three, and then 219, it's just over halfway, 2196, so 0483, 2196. Has that confused you? And we'll look at the other HLS, so that is in grid 0919, so 09 and one line, defines that whole square, but we couldn't find that landing spot. 
So we'll zoom in again. And we can now set 0991914 landing pad to the northwest of military compound. And again, if we wanted to, we could give an 8th of the grid. So that would be 0991194. Three four four. I think one nine nine one nine four four. But a eight figure grid reference will take you down to a ten meter square, which is good enough for armor three work. If we zoom out again, so we can see the contour lines. A contour line is defined as a line that joins points of the same height. So basically, it, it gives you an idea of the contours on the map, of the steepness of the ground, of high points and low points. You'll find spot heights marked, which show the height of the hills at the top, and I believe the, me the meters run roughly, let's have a look, 30... Could be five or ten meter, but yeah, inch, yeah, there is. Interval is five meter interval. So the tighter they are together, the steeper the ground. You won't want to be walking up that slope there. On the other hand, you can easily walk up that slope there. Why is this important? Well, let's talk about entry and exit from uh, an L HLS. Um, I use HLS because I usually fly with a marine unit and a landing zone is usually a beach landing point for a uh, seaboard assault whereas an HLS is a helicopter landing spot or landing site. Um, some people use LZ for landing, site, landing zone, usually American. Anyway, when going towards a landing zone you need to think about the possible anti-air threat and the hostile environment. You also need to think about contour lining and enemy presence. So the safest height to fly at is about 100, 100 meters in a rotary wing. Um, you're above most of the uh, contours. You're safe from uh, ground fire because small arms won't really reach you. RPGs won't get to you easily. And, um, I was going to say, and fixed machine guns have problems with you. However, you are vulnerable to tracked anti aircraft fire, such as ZSU. You're vulnerable to man pads, which are man portable air defense units, or portable uh, surface to air missiles. And you are vulnerable to armed helicopters and low flying fixed wing anti air patrols. However, you can go at high speed, that helps, and um, you can see around you, so it, there's less stress on the pilot. Medium height is about 15 meters. Now this height is good, because it's harder for fixed wings to get a hold of you, slightly harder for uh, track AA. Surface wear missiles are having problems, man pads are more likely to lose line of sight on you. However, you're now more vulnerable to a heavy machine gun fire, 50 cal, and small arms are starting to be noticeable. And finally, you have low level and map of earth. Low level is 20 to 30 meters, map of earth is 10 to 20 meters. At this point, you have to reduce speed. You need reaction time not to hit obstacles, terrain, wires, anything that could get in the way of the airframe. However, small arms are more effective, heavy machine guns are more effective, man pads are less effective, track AA is less effective, and fixed wing and rotary anti-air units such as gunships or light aircraft are less effective because they have a hard time tracking you and keeping up with you. So high, sp high altitude you'd be running around maximum speed, which for little words like 210, 220. Medium altitude, I'd say, drop down to about 180, 190. Low altitude, 
150 to 120. And you'll want the low altitude for your final approach. So, if we assume there may be enemy here, somewhere in this region, and we need to fly from here to here, the obvious route would be this. Hang on, let's get the right one. That's the obvious route. However, if we look, it's very close to wind turbines, very high ground, which means that we're going to be pretty much in sight at all times from about a kilometre out, which gives time for people to shoot at us. We don't want that. Also, we've got wires here, wires to the south, varying terrain with the up and down. It's not ideal. So we'll get rid of that and suggest another route. If we fly up here, we'll be flying up a valley. Down to the coastline, along sea level. OK, we'll look at that route now. And we need to divide it into high, medium and low zones. So, I say that's the end of the high. I put that at the end of the medium, and the rest of the in ingress will be low, except from there on, I want that of Earth, because I'm flaring out for the final landing. OK, well, that's going to be a rough idea of planning a route. So we're using a valley there to conceal us behind high ground. And once we've then dropped down to here, we're low and concealed by the cliffs. And here we start to be exposed. But we're at very low level, and a fair speed, until here when we go to Nath of Earth, and a scrubby off speed for the landing. I'll show the exit route when I get there, but that's how you can plan. Um, I know the area, so that's one reason I'm not going to write in the exit route. I'll let you see how you can do it on the fly. OK. For full explanation, I'm using Track IR and a HOTAS, and we'll be using little uh, MH6 transport, which would normally carry six troops plus pilot and co-pilot. OK, in we go. Instruments you may want to think about. There's the artificial horizon is the main one, engine oil temperature and torque. We have two compasses, and that's the one you'll be using. You look at the bottom, I've also got a Shack Tack hub. I could start the helicopter by using engine on, but as I've got a HOTAS, I'll just turn it on and let it come up. Sent my track higher. I can cycle through. Um, let's go back to start the map. Who's on my airframe? Sling load assistant and a valley camera. Valley camera is good if you're trying to land in a very tight area or your landing supplies. Normally, when I'm flying in Little Bird, I'll have the map and the uh, who's on board so I can know if people have gotten out. The final aid to fly we can have, using, in my case, letter H, is the GPS. Again, it's got um, the textures. So I'll pull it up, and then find the uh, texture type. And there we are, back down to the met fair texture. Minimise it. OK, if you look here, engine temperature's fine. Torque is at 70. All my degrees are fine, there's a the compass. I'll hide the, uh, the map and lift off. Uh, 
Okay, I've left it off, and now I've got looking ahead of me. I'm on the blue line, which I can see. I can clearly see there's a valley ahead of me, so I just follow that valley. Steady, steadily increased speed. I'm well above the terrain. And we're looking... I'm only at 160, it's a short flight. So we're coming up towards the uh, medium zone. Left here and drop down to the sea level. Good speed. I look ahead. The castle. Purely by nature, I tend to fly low. So there we are, coming along, and I want to get lower now. I'm aiming for that little valley in front. And when I get closer, I can see the castle up there. I'm going to drop down and lose speed, and then go up. As you see, I'm last from the castle, except anyone on the ramp. For some reason my push to talk on my flight stick isn't working, so I'm having to swap over to the keyboard. Um, but I'm now coming in for the landing, I'm going silent for my Okay, I've landed. Now I'm going to have to exfil from here. So what I'm going to do when I lift is I could turn around and go back the way I came, but following a route ingress and egress the same way gives the enemy the chance to know where you'll be. So I'm going to egress down the valley to my front. I'll start off low and fast, transition to medium height when I'm clear of direct line of sight, and then trans transition to high as I get nearer to the airfield for my landing. Now, because I had a problem I push to talk, I won't be speaking for the flight back, but just follow what happens and you'll see the different height levels and speeds. Now I'm safe to transition to medium. And now transitioning to high. I know the airfield is just over there, just coming into sight. Down collective and start to bring my speed down. Airfield's in sight, now I'm final.
and there we have it. One insulin extra with height planning. So let's just look at that again. Yeah, that's rather noisy. Just turn the engine off so we can actually hear each other talk. And go back into the map. <coughs> okay. HLS Bravo I know is on top of the hill. I'll be approaching it from the uh, east. So let's just plan the entry. Again, looking at the uh, contour lines. See, I'm staying away from these wires here. And the low approach. We'll start from there. So we've got a nice area to duck down into. <coughs> now with a nice clear and easy turn point. So we'll go around the theatre. Okay, so we'll take this. This will be my high level entry. It's not giving any clues to where I'm going. Turn if you ever go to medium height at that line. Go to low height at that line. Pass over Galati and up into Bravo. I'll actually return down this valley, but I'll show you that on the fly on the way back. OK, we'll restart the engine. Yeah, you can see that Track IR is really great for looking around, but you don't need it. You can map your viewpoint to a, hat, a top hat switch on your joystick, or you can use keyboard commands. Um, Hotas or joystick makes life easier, uh, but with the Armour standard flight model, it's more than capable of flying a helicopter using keyboard and mouse. Again, if I look to my right here, I've got a little inset map showing the start of my egress route. So again, because I'm having problems with press the talk button on my HOTAS, uh, I'm going to fly the route, and I'll just try to interject when I can, when I'm stable. So okay, lifting now. And coming up to a reasonable height, and my heat speed will increase once I stabilise. I'm well clear of any ground interruptions or trees or man-made objects. And currently I've got my throttle set, so all I'm doing is just controlling with my joystick to let me talk to you. And the great thing is, when you fly like, at this height, you really don't need to worry about the things on the ground. You may need to worry about things in the air, but as I know there's nothing on this server at the moment, I'm quite safe. Just nudge it to keep close to the blue line. I do tend to look at blue lines as a guide, not an essential you have to follow the exact route. Because when you get lower down, you may need to go around trees or buildings, and at medium height, you may find a simpler route. So here we are at 160 odd metres, 217 kph. Good line of sight all around. If anyone sees me from my objective, I'm flying away from them. Coming up to my turn point soon, I'll have to uh, transition to medium height once I get down to Athera. Okay, coming on turn point and turning. And now I just head south. 
So I can double check all my comfort. Slightly offset, come around. Pass here with 3D. And there. I know that those buildings are to the uh, east of my turn point, so I'll start to lose height. Once I get round the theater, I'll transition to low and medium speed. To be honest, I'm transitioning already because I don't want to jiggle about too much. As a guide, I know I'm following the MSR. Okay, I'm stable at 180, I'm above trees and wires, and it's waiting to come to my uh, drop point. Those big hills to my front are where I'm aiming for, and I'm coming up on my uh, low level insertion. I've got wires to my left which I'll have to watch out for, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to get my hand on my uh, throttle control as I drop. Okay, nice and stabilised. Choosing to go around or between trees and keep an eye on the wires. And there we are, safely down, under cover, and uh, a good infill. Okay, again, I don't want to repeat the journey I did, because by now, anyone I flew over will be alerted, and will be more likely to shoot at me. So I'm going to exfil down the valley to my left, and back to the Abdera air airfield. Again, because most of this is in reverse, so it's low level first, fairly high speed, and not flying in a straight line, because as I'm low, I'm vulnerable to small arms fire, so drinking, keeping moving, makes it harder to hit me. Once I'm broken line of sight from my location, where I took off, I'll move to medium height. It's not really worth going to high, le high level on the return, as it's such a short flight, but here we go. Broken line of sight, going to medium. Airfields in sight.
Asia North. Um, thank you very much for following along. I will add in the description more about map reading and uh, some of the things I've covered so you can follow on with the video. If you've liked what you've seen, please follow, like and share. Um, thank you for watching. This is Ertzi, the uh, Neon Gamer, signing off.